Hello, my friends, and welcome to my channel. And I hope you're doing as well as possible. For today's session, we are going to be doing a sacral balancing. We're really going to be activating the sacral chakra here. Specifically with regards to connecting with our senses. So I have some goodies and tools over here that I am going to be using. And together we'll be inviting a very calm, relaxing energy into our space. But you know, you're part of that too. So I just want you to begin to slow your breathing if that's, if that's all right with you and comfortable and available. Maybe start to breathe into your low belly. Really beginning that connection with our sacral chakra. Because it can be really easy to disconnect from our senses from what we're experiencing. So we want to root into this area and try to find that beautiful balance in our sacral. Okay? I'm going to begin by placing this carnelian right on your sacral chakra. Carnelian is a beautiful stone of creativity and balance. Mm. It's also associated with the sacral chakra. It's got a very nurturing quality to it. And specifically with this stone, I wanted to call this in because it's really smooth and tactile. So it can help remind us that feeling of safety and security when we're feeling something smooth and pleasant can connect us to our senses. You know, if you've ever had a palm stone and you've just kind of wound it around your hand like that, There's a reason we do that. We call them worry stones. Because they do release worry when we have that. It's kind of like expelling that energy, any blocked energy. And using any of that energy that we could use for worrying to just do this little gentle motion instead. It's also so smooth. And it feels so nice in the hand. So I'm going to place this very gently right here. I have a little oil on my hands. So... That should be a really nice kind of foundation for this session. Yeah. This spray. This is a rose spray. We talk about this all the time, but you know, scent can be such a powerful tool for healing. With aromas in mind, I want to thank Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. 
Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try a new designer scent, or more than one, each month for just $17. So with each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply to try it out before committing to a full-size bottle. So the scent is Chloe Love Story. This one has orange blossom, jasmine, neroli, and cedarwood. So the reason that I got this scent is because I took a trip to Greece a while ago. When I was there, I got this fragrance. I hadn't smelled it in so long, so I wanted to see if it still had that same fragrance, if I still liked the fragrance, and oh my gosh, I love it. And something like Scentbird is perfect for that because if I had bought a full bottle, and I didn't like it anymore, I'd kind of grown out of it or whatever. I would be stuck with the whole bottle. It has this little lock, so you can keep it in this packaging. And I think the packaging is actually very ASMR. So this next one, Red Panda Sanctuary. This one has bamboo accord notes, black currant berries, jasmine petals, creamy sandalwood, and vanilla orchid. And one of my favorite things about Scentbird is that it really is like a crash course in understanding fragrance notes because you can read all the different fragrance notes. You can start to decipher which notes are which so that if, let's say, there's something that you love about this one perfume or cologne, then when you read that same ingredient in a different perfume or cologne, you might have an inkling that you'll like that one. This next one is Joe Loves Pomelo. It has notes of vetiver, pomelo, and patchouli. And at first you can really smell that patchouli, but then as you wear it, the pomelo really starts to stand out. I've been wearing this one a lot because it's just that perfect summer scent. And finally, we have Juliet Has a Gun, Lust for Sun. It has notes of freesia, ylang ylang, orange blossom, coconut water, and vanilla. And the freesia is definitely the top note for me in this one. It's a lovely, very sensual fragrance described as nothing short of a caress. <laughs> there are over 600 designer brands to choose from and they have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options too. Make sure to click the link below to visit Scentbird's website or scan the QR code and use my code Reiki for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. Scent can bring memory. And can connect us to a space. You know, when we're talking about aromatherapy, different scents can really help us. We have properties that can balance certain aspects. You know, lavender can help calm us. Rosemary is great for mental focus and memory. Scent can be so, so powerful. And I think when we're connecting with our senses, really tapping into our sense of smell can be a great way to get started. Because when we're connecting with the sacral chakra, it's about enjoyment. It's about finding the pleasure in our everyday life. You might hear that we have our diffuser going in the background. So that's got a really nice scent as well. That has just a little bit of chamomile and lavender. So it's kind of a softer, gentler scent. I started dabbling my toe into spirituality and learning different modalities and it was just a smorgasbord where curiosity would guide me to a new thing to test and taste and see if it resonated. One of those that's been constant has been 
aromatherapy. I found that when I would use certain different essential oils, I could physically feel a difference. And so now, I mean, it's been years and years and years, I always carry tea tree oil in my purse with me. And I always have Angelica by my door. I have Rose in the bathroom and I have lavender by my bed. Sometimes chamomile. Tea tree in the in my purse in case I'm out and I get a headache. I get quite uh, travel sick, get quite car sick. And so I have to, like I can't look to the side really or, you know, looking and talking to somebody. If I'm in the passenger seat, I can't like, look at the driver or turn back. Or I get great extra But um, I find that when I do have to do something, you know, look at a map or, you know, do something in, in the back or turn, look, whatever. The one thing that helps me with that is tea tree oil. I'll just sit for a moment and just take a few inhales with the open bottle of tea tree oil outside of my nose. And I find it works every time. It's lovely. You know, I love using lavender and chamomile for bed. Rose in the bathroom just because I think it's so there's something romantic about it. I really love rose as a scent. I know some people don't love rose, but I love rose and I've been putting tons of rose bushes in my garden. I have six. I just got another. I think 14. I think I have 14 roses now. And then a few, oh no, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 roses. And then 15 of which I planted. And then three of which were here already. And then I have a bunch of rambling wild roses. But they don't really bloom that often. They don't get enough sun. But I love the smell of rose. And I always have a rose candle in my bathroom. And then I love to keep a rosemary around if I'm doing anything with regards to study or something that requires a lot of focus. And I grew up with a lot of rosemary. It was like my, one of my childhood homes had a hedge of rosemary. And so the smell of it is incredible. And at my old place, there was a large established rosemary bush that was like all kind of gnarled and really cool looking. So I kind of trimmed it up in a topiary form and it was like a bit taller than me. So I kind of gave it like a canopy and it was really, really beautiful. I really liked it. But the flowers on that, that blue is like one of my favorite colors in the garden. And the pollinators just loved it. So rosemary has that special thing for me. But I think it's really helpful and important for you to not only connect with the properties that different aromas 
have, you know, the benefits, the healing properties, but also connecting with the sense that remind you of something, the call to mind something, because something could be associated with, you know, something very activating or very, uh, you know, invigorating, but it might bring you a lot of peace and calm because the scent reminds you of something from your past that was very peaceful and supportive. And so it, you know, it's about getting to know yourself and that's really what I try to encourage here on this channel is just that through this search, we just do what we can to try to get to know ourselves a little bit better and shed some light on the dark spots so we can see them, incorporate them, and love them and accept them. And so that we can integrate as a whole and then give ourselves what we want, what we're calling for, what we need in a specific way. You know, the same way that we would try to, you know, do such things for a loved one. You wouldn't want to give general gifts to a loved one, right? You want those gifts to be specific to that person and to their lives and to their experiences and to your shared experiences together, perhaps. So you want to be able to know that person in order to honor them and it's the same with yourself we just very often don't do that we don't give ourselves permission to care for ourselves in that way do we so i guess this is me giving you that permission so my darling i give you permission to get to know yourself and then to honor yourself And since you're here, <laughs> I just swoop some energy off your feet here. Since you're here, I know that you have a connection to sound in some way, a connection to that vibration. Very often, you know, we are really disconnected from sounds, and it takes really you know, a great deal of intentionality to even recognize what it is that we're hearing. So often we live in a situation where there's constant sound and we contribute to that by constantly having things that we're listening to, right? But it's so helpful to really retrain ourselves to be aware of all the different levels and layers of sound. What's here in this space? You know, the first thing that I can hear, I'm sure you're hearing my voice and my, my earrings. The spray bottle. You're hearing me waft. This fan outside of your feet. beautiful music that he made for me. You can hear maybe something in your space. You can hear one of you was saying you watch these with your cat. That just makes me so 
so happy to think that there are little animal friends joining us. That's so lovely. So, maybe your cat is purring. Maybe your dog is snoring. Maybe there's traffic where you are. Maybe there's someone with you in the room and they're talking or working on the computer. Whatever it is, just bringing some awareness to it and recognizing the symphony of sound all around. It's really important. And as we connect with all of our senses, we start to balance our sacral chakra. This is a myrtle and fern woodwicked candle. So I just wanted to light our candle and set our intention here. And as we do this, I want you to just really focus on melting into the present moment, sinking into the here and now. So on behalf of your highest, wisest, most empowered and aligned self, in loving comfort and in perfect balance, Perfect balance. I wish to conduct this Reiki session for connecting to your senses and activating your sacral chakra. Now, if you would like to clarify this intention, specify it, or maybe even set your own intention based on whatever it is that you're moving through. Feel free to use this flame to do so now. And as long as it's in service of your own and everyone else's community. Everyone else's highest, wisest selves. And we will honor that intention and see it through time and space to where and whenever it's applicable. You can always pause just to kind of more deeply connect with your intention because I think intentions are so important. So I want to make sure you have enough time to do that. But sometimes, you know, when I'm doing a session on Bert, he usually knows exactly what his intention is. When I ask, he's usually, when I say, when you're ready, let me know. And he usually nods almost immediately afterwards. I've got already. Okay. <laughs> so that can happen. I'm going to use a little bit of this incense here. There we go. This is a sandalwood incense. And it's, it's really nice. So 
just doing a little bit of clearing here, okay, my friend? So clearing in the mental plane. How are you feeling? As always, I hope by the end of the session you feel at least 10% better. Hopefully you feel 100% better. But 10% is a big deal. And slowly do little things for ourselves to bring us to, you know, 10% better, 10% better. Before we know it, we'll be feeling pretty dang good. So you can start to you know, call to mind anything that you think is blocking you here, blocking you from feeling connected to your sacral, from connecting to pleasure, from connecting to your senses. Anything that's blocking you from experiencing life here and all the joys that it has to offer. Just call that to mind. What is it? Or maybe even just saying, yeah, I feel blocked from that. I'd like to clear that. Sometimes when we just when we just give word and you know speak that word out loud to something that we're experiencing, things can start to shift. Like setting an intention. Saying, you know, sometimes we say, Oh, I had no idea I was holding that, or I had no idea that was so stuck and just acknowledging it and bringing the light of awareness to it, I've realized that I can open there. So this is what we're doing is just kind of clearing what's available to be clear right off the bat. And then there are some deeper things that we're going to have to dive more deeply into so that we can really release them, process them, all of that. But there are some things that just like when you're bringing a lot of attention to your jaw or your shoulders are up here or something like that and someone says you can you can release your shoulders you just go oh <laughs> right <laughs> or similarly when someone says are you breathing <laughs> oh yeah no I forgot about that <laughs> sometimes that can happen Yeah, I wasn't connected to the world around me. I wasn't connected to my senses at all. My head was a million miles away. I was thinking about what happened at work or going on vacation <laughs> or whatever it might be. And so I wasn't able to connect with that. each bite, maybe put your fork down and really savor those flavors. You know, savor the flavors of every bite. And when you swallow it, you can even thank that bite as it goes down for nourishing your body. You know, very often when we're eating, we're like excited about the next bite or we're just mindlessly eating sometimes and just going one bite after another, but when we really take time in between and really think about the food, who prepared it, the, all of the different flavors that we can experience, even saying them out loud, I taste this and this and this. We had, Bert made an aubergine, like a, an eggplant. I've been watching a lot of gardening, uh, British gardening shows. Eggplant. And uh, and zucchini from our garden. We 
we made, uh, he made a pasta with that last night. So it was eggplant and zucchini and there was something else from the garden in there. And then we had some flowers from the garden. I think we did some of the radish flowers and maybe some allium flowers. We had herbs from the garden, lots of purple basil and green basil and uh, oregano. That was really lovely. And it was so fun, like through each bite, he didn't tell me what he had put in it. And so each bite, I was sort of guessing what was in there. And tomatoes from our garden. I have so many tomatoes this year, I'm so happy. But that has been that was amazing because you know we, you know it was like you, I had to be the detective kind of decipher and discern and that's really a lovely thing to do and it really keeps you present with your meal it helps you be really grateful and when someone cooks a meal for you it's like helps keep you, you know, that can connect you to the gratitude with the food and then keeping you present with that. So maybe on your next meal, try not to be doing anything. Try to just be focusing on your food and really savor each bite. Detect the flavors. Decipher the different flavors and textures and just enjoy. Connecting again to that pleasure. Same with when you're drinking. The temperature. Is it smooth or what you're drinking? Is it thicker? Yeah. I just encourage you to connect more deeply with that. A little more oil. This is just some rose. And then... Then we have touch. So important, so comforting. It can be helpful when we're disconnected, you know, when we're not experiencing our own bodies, feeling very disembodied, to, you know, run our hands along our arms, just to remind ourselves that we're here, we exist. That can be so helpful just in terms of connecting with our sense of touch, you know, gently caressing our cheeks, our neck, you can even do a little tapping, that's nice, isn't it? My Nana, when I was younger, she used to I could do, it sounds weird, but do like an eye massage where she would just come and kind of rub our eyes very gently like that. Just kind of through our eyebrows like that. And it was so relaxing. She was so, like, a very kind of Swedish grandma. She had like very soft and she's very, she has a very soft presence to her. You can do that. You know, sometimes I like to just massage my jaw. I hold tension in my mouth, my jaw, sometimes in my throat. That's good to, you know, sometimes I, I notice that I'm, I can't do it because I, it's always unconscious when I'm doing it, but that I hold that tension in my mouth and then when I release, I'm like, I can't believe I was doing that <laughs> without even noticing. So it's just good to, you know, do a little self-care massage. 
so calming and relaxing. You know, you can put your two peace fingers underneath your jaw and just kind of wiggle them back and forth. Similarly here on the brows, just wiggle your hands. You know, the classic on the temples or same peace fingers. Underneath your ears and just kind of rubbing back and forth on the ears. That's really nice. Down here. On your forearm, in between these muscles here, kind of following this vein. That's a nice one, especially if you're on your computer. But then just this one, slowly and gently, opposite arms, opposite uh, hands rubbing down. And then we've talked about a little cream and a hand massage. Those are great. You know, getting a Reiki session. And if there's a Reiki practitioner near you who does, you know, hands-on healing. Some Reiki practitioners don't do hands-on healing. So, both are wonderful <laughs> for different reasons. But it's... Uh, it's helpful. I think a firm but gentle touch is really relaxing and supportive and it helps you feel safe, I think. So you just think about that sensation. Like gentle touch. It's so nice. And when someone is there and their sole objective is just to care for you and help you feel more relaxed, help you feel better in whatever way, that's pretty nice. I have some natural rose tea. Herbal team. I just wanted to sprinkle some of these rose petals around you. Rose buds. deeply as you can with this idea that you're worthy of these moments of luxury. You're worthy of caring for yourself. You're worthy of being in a place that, you know, the sense there or a sense that you've chosen where, you know, you're, you're worthy of creating those little moments of luxury. Deepak Chopra talks about, you know, inviting in these little moments of luxury in your life as your birthright. And I love that idea. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. You know, you don't have to do anything crazy. You know, I just picked a wildflower and put it in a little vase and put it on my partner's desk just because I thought it might be nice while he's working to have a little flower there. But little things like that, we don't need to spend a whole lot of time or an enormous amount of energy or money even to connect more deeply with our senses, to surround ourselves with things that bring us pleasure. But the way we can do that is by knowing what does bring us pleasure, right? Okay, my love. I'm going to surround you with roses. It smells like roses, like, um, very subtle. Like rose tea. <laughs> 
as you might expect. Mm. You are divine, you are connected, you are expressive, you are loved, you are strong, you are creative, emotionally balanced, and deeply connected to all of your senses. You are safe. Okay, my friends. I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day or your night. Take really good care of yourself, okay? Take good care of each other. And don't forget to check out Scentbird. Again, I'll leave all that down below. And thanks so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. And until we meet again, my friend, be so, so well.